What's up guys? This is Brave and I'm back with another review of Tyler Perry Sisters. This is season 5 episode 17 and the episode is titled Looks Are Deceiving. Let's jump right into this review. Alright so we start this episode off exactly where we left off and that is with Fatima confronting Zach about what went down at Karen's salon. So she's showing him the photo and he's like no look at the photo look at the photo you know, I did not kiss her. I'm telling you I didn't kiss her. We just happened to hug when I was on my way out. Now, here's the thing. Fatima is not convinced. She's like, why would she even hug you? Especially considering the way things have left off when it comes to Zach and Fatima. I'm sorry, not Zach and Fatima, Zach and Karen. Because last time Fatima saw Karen and Zach in the same room, Karen was hurt. Karen was yelling. She was screaming about that desk. She was mad that they were engaged. Like, that was the last time that she saw them together. So, it doesn't make sense for Karen to just up and give him a hug, right? Now, here's the thing. I blame Tyler Perry for this because he could have at least let some days go by for Karen to have processed how she really felt about Zach at this moment for her to cool off. But that's not what we got with Tyler's writing, so we're just going to roll with it. So, now, again, Zach is arguing that he did not kiss her. So, at one point, he just, like, thinks about it, I guess, in his mind. And he has figured that Karen has set him up. He's like, you know, Karen set this up. Like, that's the only reason why she would be doing all this. Because why else would she be nice to me? So, he is convinced, you know, Fatima is like, listen, I'm trying to talk to you. You know, Karen is not the person who, like, sent me the photo or anything. She's not behind it. She's not behind this. But Zach is not listening. It literally got to the point where they are arguing to, to the top of their lungs. And Fatima has her hand on his arm. She's, like, grabbing him, telling him not, basically telling him not to go. Because he was trying to walk away. And she's like, no, you have to stay. We're not done with this conversation. And he told her, listen, remember when we were in the gym and you told me to let you go because you were mad? That means for you to let me go now. I need I need this to be equal. And I was like, ooh, yeah. Definitely let him go because I don't want anything to get too physical between you guys. But one thing that I will say is that I just feel like at this point, when it comes to Zach and Fatima's relationship, why is it never addressed how much of a hothead that Zach is? Like, Zach goes from 0 to 100 really, really quick, okay? Especially when it comes to, like, if you're talking about Heather, if you're talking about Karen, like, he just kind of explodes, and I'm just like, okay, I'm tired of Zach exploding every time something goes wrong. Like, at this point, Zach has exploded every episode that we see him. Like, can we get some balance here? Can we have Fatima call him out and be like, listen, you're not about to explode on me every time there's a mention of one of your baby mamas. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, y'all, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so we are now at Sabrina's house and Bio comes over. Here's my problem. First things first. Why is Bio shopping in Calvin's closet? Do we mix the characters up? Because I'm sorry, that was a blouse that Calvin will wear. And I'm like, why is it on bio? Nonetheless, of course, we have Sabrina and bio saying how they missed each other and all that stuff. And then she tells him that she has ran into some trouble and goes on to tell him about how Maurice, who's her friend from the bank, he dated this guy and the guy had a troubled past and he robbed the bank, right? So Bio, he is eating this story up, but he is so intrigued by it. And then she goes on to let him know how, you know, she got pulled into this, Maurice got pulled into this, and he's like, no, you're a good girl, I know that you would never do this. And I was like, yeah, but she may be a good girl, that ain't gonna stop her from asking you for some money. So, again, she is going on with the story, tells him about how, you know, she got bail, how Maurice now has bail, and how it's $1.5 million. So I can't lie. Watching Bio, he was taken aback that she was even asking him for this amount of money. And so Bree's like, I know it's a lot of money. And he's like, well, you know, your friend, like, 
what kind of person is he because he don't he has dated someone who robbed a bank that don't sound like a good person and i'm just like bio you should have skipped over all that and said girl i only took you out on two dates why are you coming to me for money like i understand the situation is really messed up and maurice has this ridiculously high bail but like girl how desperate are you that you would go to a man who you only went out with two times i want to say it was two times um yeah make that make sense girl like if i was bio i really would have been like so you call me over here for this and sabrina you can't just have this type of conversation ask for that kind of money girl you should have gave it up to uh bio and then ask him for the money maybe he would have been more lenient but that's not what happened and how did we end this scene you guys with bio deciding that it was time for him to go he was like you know i would have loved to take you to out to dinner but this is very awkward now and i absolutely agree like i don't even see how sabrina and bio can even be a thing or anything like that because she asked him for that amount of money like again tyler perry and his shenanigans like i understand what he was trying to do with this whole scenario with sabrina and uh maurice but like the 1.5 million dollars like could it have been like a hundred a hundred thousand maybe that was would have made more sense and then also the fact that you have sabrina going to the door and bio's about to leave calvin's about to walk in how many times are we going to get scenes like this i'm over it nonetheless like i said calvin is at the door so according to him he was trying to reach out to sabrina but she wasn't answering her phone so he decided to just you know pop up i said you know what tyler stop making these men just pop up at these people's house like who does that nonetheless he also lets her know that he knows about maurice's bail and of course she already knows about the 1.5 million dollars and she was like yeah i know about it that's why bio was here like girl why did you even have to tell calvin that piece of information please let me know now she's like you know he has that type of money calvin thinks that the man done stole it i said how'd you get that when you already knew that he owned the restaurant why would you think he was out here stealing money calvin okay that was weird so she's like yo he turned me down about giving me the money so we're back to square one now calvin still only has this twenty thousand dollars and I said, oh, the same 20000 that you were going to put on for Sabrina instead of Maurice? Okay, glad you're offering it again. So he says he has 20 Now you have her saying that she has 87 I'm still trying to figure out how this man is supposed to have like a whole construction business and he only has 20 But I'm going to let that rock. I'm going to let that rock. And how does she have 87 Nonetheless... How many he even mentions how his dad was going to put up his house for Maurice. And I'm like, whoa, how are all these people, these outside people getting involved? Like, I know what this storyline is, but it's so annoying that you have Sabrina and now Calvin trying to reach out to any and everybody that they know just to get Maurice out of jail. And like, I know that it's bad that maurice is in jail because he did not do anything and on top of that the prosecutor is trying to get him to flip on sabrina but like at this point it's like what can y'all really do because y'all have really tried to resource people who barely have a connection with y'all like i am never going to forgive sabrina for the audacity of her to ask bio for 1.5 million dollars again you guys 1.5 million dollars in cash that you want this man to give you just because because one of your friends decided to date a man who was horrible who set him up like i'm sorry that is crazy to me and speaking of dating that man they mentioned q and how he basically drives maurice's car and he sleeps um in front of the apartment building because as you know he's supposed to be paroled there and I'm like, what y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna jump the man in the middle of the night? Whatever. Let's just go ahead and move on to the next scene. 
All right, so we actually got a quick scene with Andy and Robin. He stopped by her office at the end of the night, and he's trying to ask her out for dinner yet again. I'm sorry, but when did Robin get this thirsty? No offense, but like, Robin came in as that guy. He could probably pull any woman that he wants, and now he's just, oh my gosh, so smitten with Andy, he has to have Andy. Yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I hate the fact that when it comes to Andy, every guy wants her. Every guy has to have her. And it's just like, how realistic is that? Like, Robin can definitely find somebody else. Let's not, let's not pretend like he cannot. And she finally gives in, says that she will meet him for a drink. And I'm just like, all right, cool. This is better to see her do scenes with Gary because y'all already know I'm never feeling Gary. So we hop on over to Preston. He is at Danny's house because he clearly has nothing else to do with all his time. So Danny comes in. They have very, very small, limited talk about how work was for her. Um, I don't believe that she even asked him how his day was or what did he do all day. Um, first things first, he's going to ask her, why won't she marry him? Now, Danny's answer is that they don't have enough in common. And I feel like that was a terrible answer. I feel like she should start off by saying, we don't even know each other enough yet to even come near the word wedding, marriage, proposal, any of those things, engagement. We hardly know each other. Can we get to know each other better first? That's where this conversation needs to go. So then we have them kind of go back and forth a little bit about if she actually loves him or not. And then she finally says that she doesn't love him in the same way that he loves her. And I'm like, you know what? How can you? Because at this point, you have him giving obsession. Again, another man who's obsessed with one of the women on the show. And you have her on the other hand. She feels like they don't have much in common, even though we have yet to see them try to see what they might have in common. Like, I am so exhausted watching this show weekly and we don't see any type of growth with these characters like I don't even understand how we are still talking about them possibly getting married no could you start at step one like I keep saying they need to go back to square one and introduce themselves to each other go out on a date see if they can go bowling go do some activities I don't know but I need for them to figure this out. Like, Tyler, please stop writing a lot of the girls' storylines very similarly. Like, there's a lot of storylines that all you did was change the girls' names and their partners and gave them the same type of scenarios. And then also on top of that, like, why is it that Danny is so hesitant to even try with Preston. Like she's quick to yell out how. They don't have nothing in common. They don't have nothing in common. Yet we have yet to see her take initiative to try. Considering she says that she loves this man so much. Like. And also. Why are we not dealing with the trauma. Of what happened to Jonah. She ha happened with Jonah. I'm sorry. She hasn't even told Preston. Why she's not even comfortable. With having sex with him right now. She has not told him about what went down with Jonah. She has not even been upfront and honest with how she feels at the moment after she just went through what she went through. Like, I'm sorry, Tyler needs writers. And it's really aggravating to watch because it's not the actors. It's what's written for them to have to say. So like I said, let me jump back into the scene. They are trying to figure out why can't she love him the way he loves her. And he's like, you know, you're going to have to explain more. So she lets him know that she likes being alone. She likes her space. But also, she likes to be herself and, you know, the authentic Danny. But here's the thing. Danny, you have been Danny this entire time. Nothing has stopped Danny from being herself when it comes to her and Preston's relationship. The only person who has probably had to do some type of conforming in this bootleg relationship, because it's not even a relationship, it's a situationship. They kind of talking, kind of dealing with each other. 
hell, friends with benefits, whatever you want to call it, um, is Preston. Like, I feel like Preston has had to do more changes than Danny has. And then also, at one point, we did see that she brought up the fact that, you know, it doesn't seem like he wants to marry Win not Wendy, what's her name? Mindy. He doesn't want to marry Mindy like he says that he would. And no, of course he wouldn't because he wants to marry you, even though marriage is unnecessary in this situation. Um, Danny says that she doesn't see herself being someone's wife. She doesn't want to be um, someone's possession. And I'm just like, okay, I see all that. But again, I'm going to need for Danny to have some type of breakthrough and emotional something. Like something's going to have to break when it comes to Danny's character. Because I don't even understand how we got to the point of the end of that conversation ending with her thinking that they could just sit at the table and have dinner together. He's like, no, I'm about to go ahead and head out. So he ends up leaving and he says that he's going to go back home the next day. And I'm like, okay, well, if this man is going to go home, this needs to be the end of a thing, Preston. This should have been a farewell to Preston because I don't want to see Danny and Preston date anymore. It's tiring, it's draining, and it's not going anywhere. We've been stuck at the same bus stop for days at this point. We're done here. Let's move on over. We have Zach. He's showing up to the salon. He's trying to find Karen. So, of course, we have some back and forth with him and Pam because Pam is not trying to tell him where Karen is. That's what he's asking for. So, he ends up picking up the phone from the salon, calling Karen and, like, saying, where are you? We need to talk. She tells him that she's at the steam plant. He uh, hands Pam back the phone and he dips out. Now, Pam tells her to go ahead and run. She needs to get up out of there. Because Zach is pissed off, he's on his way, and he's about to go off on Karen. But nope, Karen stands her ground, she's like, nah, I'm about to be here, ain't nobody think about Zach. Alright, so we actually see Karen and Aaron there on their date, and Aaron's trying to get to the bottom of what happened on the phone call. So, he's asking her, like, you know, who was that, what's going on, and she's like, well, Zach may show up. And he's like, well, do you want to leave, because I don't want you to, you know, have to go through no drama, and she's like, nope, I ain't trying to leave. She just wants to get her food, of course. Who's going to pass up a free meal? And she is not about to worry about what Zach got going on. So they decide to stay. And let's hop on over to Danny. So she actually ends up calling Andy. And she lets her know, like, what's going on with Preston. And how now he wants to marry her. And even Andy is like, that don't sound right. So she's like, you know, I just want to lay up with somebody else so I can get over this. And Andy's like, no, absolutely not. You don't need to have anybody else in your house. Don't let another stray come over because you know what happened last time. So now, Danny, you can tell that she's feeling some type of way that Andy even brought that up. But it's like, no, you should not You should not be thinking about bringing somebody else over to your place. Like, come on now, Danny. And I promise you, I am going to be extremely pissed off if Tyler writes that Danny invited Q over. I promise you. I'm going to go off in my next review or whenever he might try to squeeze that in there because absolutely not. We did not sign up for any of this. They end up getting off the phone and Danny says she's going to go to Sabrina's house. We shall see. Now, we also see that when they get off the phone, Andy is at the steam plant. She meets up with um, Robin and then she happens to see that Karen and Aaron are there. So she goes over. She says hey to them. And Karen ends up giving her the paper. She's like, you know, I already signed them. You can go ahead and look over them. All right, cool. But at one point, Andy's about to walk away. And then Karen kind of follows her and like, oh, wait. Um, Zach says that he's going to come by. Like, do you know anything about that? Do you know why he's going to come by? Now, Andy's like, nope, I don't know nothing. What are you talking about? I said, oh, we here we go, Andy. I, okay, I know that there have been a lot of people who feel like, Andy, she plays both sides when it comes to Karen and Fatima. But I feel like at this point, we can officially say that she is Team Fatima. And <laughs> she's definitely riding for Fatima. Like, she's not telling Karen everything, especially considering that's supposed to be her best friend. And I feel like 
the shift happen when Karen start acting really crazy about Zach. So I think there's definitely going to come a certain point in time when this situation is going to have to be addressed. Now, for some reason, Karen is convinced that the whole reason why Andy is even there is because she already knew that Karen would be there. And I'm like, Karen, why would Andy come to the steam plant just so that she could see that you're there with Aaron? Like, I'm sorry. Between Karen and Zach, why are both of y'all thinking this way? That somebody is conspiring against y'all. That's weird. So Andy finally convinces her that she, that's not why she was there. And for her to go ahead and have dinner with her man and let things be. So Andy ends up going over to where Robin is or whatever. And then she gets a phone call and it's from Fatima. So now Fatima is on the line letting Andy know that she actually confronted Zach about the whole situation. So now you have Andy sort of kind of attempting to put two and two together. And she mentions to Fatima how Zach is going to be coming to the steam plant. And I'm just like, why would you even give her that information? Like, that's you getting too involved in somebody else's relationship. Ugh, whatever. So Robin, again, is trying to get her to stay for dinner. I'm like, oh my gosh, when did Robin become so thirsty? I'm over it. So let me actually just jump on over to Fatima and what's her friend name? Angela. I don't know why I keep forgetting her name. Um, this conversation, I don't know what it is about Fatima and Angela's conversations to me. It's like the timing is off and there's so much dead air between them. It's very strange. Nonetheless, um, I feel like we've already had this conversation. Of course, we're asking again about how if this person is legit, would Karen set him up? Um, they also talk about how you know, this relationship is supposed to be so different, but, you know, Fatima is a runner. She always runs when things get tough. Like, I think these are all conversations that we've already had. So I'm just going to go ahead and move past it. They decide, or should I say Fatima decides that she's going to go to the steam plant and, you know, pop up and see what's going on because that's where everybody is. All right, so now we get a scene with Calvin and Sabrina, they get a call from Maurice, and he's trying to figure out what's going on on the outside. According to them, they're trying to gather the money up, and of course, Maurice is back to his antics. He's still calling about their names, all of this stuff, and he's like, you guys gotta get me out of here. I can't last that long. I need to get up out of here. Um, he keeps reiterating this. So by the time we get to the end of the phone call, it seemed like Maurice was going to self-harm himself or am I crazy but we'll have to wait and see what really happens with Maurice because like I said he said he needs to get out of the prison so they get off the phone next thing you know um Danny comes over and Calvin leaves now one thing that I will say is that Danny is back to cracking jokes on Calvin she's cracking jokes on Bayou like she been real extra um of course she asked if Bayou gave up the money, and of course the answer was no. So Sabrina's like, I'm really worried about Maurice. It seems like, you know, he's going to crack in there. And Danny's like, listen, he kind of brought this on himself. Like, he's the one who put himself in that situation. Like, you don't need to be harboring all these feelings as if it's your fault or it's your, de it's your job to save Maurice. Now, at one point, you did have Sabrina saying, oh, yeah, and the nerve of this guy referring to Q. Could you please just say Q's name? Like, I'm tired of Tyler stretching that out when Danny's finally going to figure out that the Q that she works with is the person who set her friend, um, Sabrina, and Marisa. So, on top of that, you have Sabrina saying that she wants to join Danny getting high. I'm like, oh, okay. So you just gonna go ahead and throw your little life away? Because think about it. If she worked at a bank, they can literally drug test them at any given time. And of course it would have to come back clean. So I'm just like, so I know you don't work at the bank no more, but what's your game plan? Because you ain't about to pass no drug test. So what kind of job you gonna go out for? Just curious. Just real curious. Now let's hop on over to the steam plant. 
because you have Zach coming through the exit door, rolling up on Karen's table, and he is pissed off. And he is going off on Karen. Karen's not trying to answer no questions. Karen literally doesn't even know what Zach is talking about. So he brings it up again, like, oh, you had somebody take a picture of us when I gave you a hug. And she's like, I'm not answering no questions. I'm not answering no questions. I said, see, here's the thing. You can't sit up there and be like, I'm not going to answer any questions. You could have just said, no, I never did that. You know what I'm saying? But no. Again, this situation escalating, 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 left and right. You have Aaron chiming in. He's like, you know, you don't need to be yelling. Uh, we need to calm this down. We're in a restaurant, all this stuff. Every time he speaks, Zach is like, I ain't talking to you. So at one point, Aaron is like, let's just leave. Let's just leave. And when Karen is trying to get up to leave, Zach kind of like puts his hands on her. Like, not punch her or nothing, but he is a like, pushing her shoulder down like no you're not about to leave until you answer my question and then next thing you know Aaron gets up him and Zach start scuffling and I'm like oh my god we finally got some action right and that's when the show went off y'all I was kind of upset about that because I'm just like we could have threw away 85% of this episode because we got nothing out of this episode to be honest but you know what that's okay, because next week looks like it's going to be real good. Hopefully, my review will be better next week. And I will talk to y'all in the next one. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, y'all. And we will be back next week for more sisters. <laughs> Bye, y'all.